In this chapter, the chromatic palette, we're going to be looking at a lot of different ways to outline uh, progressions, primarily 2-5-1 progressions, since they're so common in jazz. But uh, one of the most effective ways to outline a 2-5-1 progression is to really focus in on the guide tones. Now, we've spent a lot of time working with guide tones in terms of coming up with our chord voicings and uh, as strategies to comp through standards. But we can also use guide tones, meaning the thirds and sevenths or thirds and sixths of a chord, uh, as, a, as a great tool to outline uh, changes as we solo over them. If you take a look at example one, this is a, a kind of a, a, a classic bebop line and uh, it involves our vertical thinking approach in that we're really outlining each individual chord by highlighting the chord tones. So in the first bar we're really playing an arpeggio that focuses and highlights the chord tones of B flat minor 7 followed by E flat 7, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's an effective way of thinking about it. <laughs> Example two features uh, the same 2-5-1 progression uh, and just really focuses on the line, the lead line, centered around these guide tones, the third and seventh of each chord. And you can hear um, when you listen to the example as well as when you play through it yourself how effective they are. There's no mistake what chord we're playing on. <laughs> Example three continues that same concept. Now we're in a different key. We're in the key of C major, uh, and it's a very common progression, two, five, one, six, or you can think of that A7 as a five of two. But again, um, you know, not only do the guide tones really effectively outline the harmonic progression, but they really force you to be melodic because you essentially only have two notes to work with. You have two notes that you're really focusing on, uh, and as a result, uh, it forces you to be a little bit more melodic, more creative, and um, you know, work with a little less material, which oftentimes uh, can yield dramatic results, you know, uh, some bigger results. <laughs> Example four is another concept soloing with guide tones. This time you're playing like a pianist. Um, you can call it self-comping with guide tones. What we're doing is, if you imagine a pianist playing, um, the pianist would, would typically comp with the left hand while the right hand solos. And we can approximate that on guitar by using these little two note um, chord shells uh, featuring guide tones and play a little solo line on top of that. And that's exactly what's happening in example four. Another way to approach soloing is to really focus on extensions of each chord. Example 5 illustrates this by focusing on the ninth of each chord in this 2-5-1 uh, progression in C. So we can really outline a D minor 9, a G9, and a C major 9 by focusing on the ninth of each chord, which would be E over D, uh, A over G, and then D over C. And that's what this line uh, works on. <laughs> Example six continues this effect, uh, focusing on the 11th. So um, the 11th is featured on both the D minor seven and G seventh chords. And then on the one chord, C major seven, um, that would be kind of a dissonant note to land and resolve on the F, which is the 11th of C. So um, most of the time, uh, players, when they focus on the 11th on a one major seventh chord, they'll raise it to a sharp 11. So you'll notice in this example in the third bar, the F is sharped, which creates a beautiful major seven sharp 11 sound. <laughs> Example seven, we'll take this concept a step further and uh, focus on the 13th. So now we have D minor 13, G 13, and C major 13 all being implied with those extensions for each chord. And then in the fourth bar, we have an A7 altered chord, so we'll flat the 13 in that case by emphasizing an F natural over the A7 chord. <laughs> In 
example eight, we're focusing on um, a kind of a, a, a shape-shifting trick that a lot of guitar players use. And um, the idea is to take a melodic arc or a motivic idea and whatever you play over the two chord, you can move it up three frets or move it up the interval of a minor third over the five chord. And that's what example eight um, illustrates. We have a little line over D minor. And then we can take that exact line and move it up three frets effectively to F minor. And then resolve it to the one chord. And that's a, that's a wonderful trick that a lot of uh, guitar players use um, to, to duplicate an idea through different chord changes. Example 9 will continue this shape-shifting uh, trick with a minor 3rd over a minor 2-5 cadence. So this time we're working with a D minor 7 flat 5. Uh, to a G7 altered resolving to a minor and but it's the same concept uh, at use here Example 10 will take it one step further with this shape-shifting concept by now implying different triads over the original 251 uh, so, as we saw in the previous examples, we can think of D minor over the D minor 7, the 2 chord, move up 3 frets or a minor 3rd to outline F minor, which gives us a G7 altered sound, and then we can uh, outline a C major 7th chord using an A minor triad. And what's cool about this is that those notes of the three triads that we're superimposing, D, F, and A, also create a D minor triad. So you can just think to yourself, well, um, I can play minor triads based on each individual note of the minor triad based on the two. So in this case, the two is a D minor seven chord. We can focus on a D minor triad, F minor triad, and then an A minor triad over the C. In example 11, we're going to continue our study of this minor triad uh, superimposition concept. In example 11, we're doing the same thing that we did in the previous example, example 10, by focusing on playing each triad, the notes of each triad over each chord in a 2-5-1 progression. But in this case, we're starting on the fifth of the two. So if our two chord is a D minor 7, we're going to start with an A minor triad and superimpose that over the D minor 7 then move up a minor third to superimpose a C minor triad over G7, creating a nice G7 altered sound, and finally an E minor triad over C major 7, which will give us a really beautiful C major 9 sound. In example 12, we're going to combine the two previous approaches and rather than outlining a complete minor triad, we can move around a little bit. So example 12 features a D minor triad on top of the D minor 7 chord, then an F minor triad, so we're moving up a minor third, but instead of moving up to uh, the A, we'll just move down a half step to E minor over C major 7. And this is actually a lot easier to um, visualize and, and, and even play because the F minor to E minor is just a half step down, so it's, it's pretty easy. You start right on the 2, move up a minor 3rd, and then resolve to the 1 chord by moving down a half step. <laughs> In examples 13 A, B, and C, we can see how we can superimpose um, not only an F minor triad, but an F minor 6 chord and an F minor 6 pentatonic scale all over a D half diminished chord. In example 14, we see this minor triad um, superimposing concept here on a minor cadence. So we're starting by using the F minor over D half diminished, just as we saw with examples 13, uh, A through C. And then we move up a minor third to do e, uh, A flat minor over G7 altered. And then we move up to C minor uh, right on top of the C minor 6 chord, the 1 in the minor cadence. <laughs> Example 15, 
We're looking at three different triads uh, superimposed over a minor 2-5. We have an F minor triad over the D half diminished again. Then we move up a minor third, like we've been doing in the previous examples, to A flat minor over G7 altered. And then we just move down a half step to G minor, which creates a really nice C minor 11 sound on the tonic C minor 7 chord. In example 16, we're taking another concept. We're starting with our first triad, but then we'll explore different types of triads moving in half steps. So previously, we've been superimposing a minor triad over all three chords. Now, we're going to just move chromatically up and down using different triads. So in example 16, we start with a D minor triad over D minor, but then we move down a half step and outline a D flat major triad over G7, and then we continue uh, with a G triad over C. In example 17, we take the same approach, but we move up. So we're starting with a D minor triad over D uh, minor, the two chord, and then we move up to an E flat sound. In this case, we're uh, choosing E flat mixolydian with some chromatic activity over the G7. And then we move up another half step uh, and play E minor over the C major 7. And an E minor pentatonic idea sounds really beautiful over a C major 7, creating a C minor, a C major 9 sound. In example 18, we descend in half steps from the 5th. So we're starting off with an A minor triad or A minor ideas over the D minor 7, the 2 chord. And then we move down to A flat minor or A flat minor pentatonic ideas over the G7. And then we resolve to a G major 7 idea over the C major 7, which creates a Lydian sharp 11 type of sound. In example 19, we also descend in half steps, but this time starting with a third. So on D minor 7, we'll start on the third, which would be F, the flat third, F, and we're playing some F major ideas, F major 7 ideas over the D minor 7. Then we move down a half step and play E major. We superimpose E major ideas on top of the G7. And then we move down another half step to play E flat major on top of the C minor 7, which creates a C minor 9 or C minor 11 type of sound. All right, moving forward, we're going to explore substituting minor pentatonic scales over different chords. In example 20, we outline uh, three different minor pentatonic scales that work beautifully over a minor seventh chord, in this case, C minor 7. The formula, this is all outlined in the text, but the formula is basically building minor pentatonic scales off the root, one, the fifth, and the two, or a handy little mnemonic device you can think of as just two, five, one in your progression. So over a C minor 7 in example 20, we have C minor pentatonic, G minor pentatonic, and D minor pentatonic. <laughs> Example 21 features a line that mixes all three of these minor pentatonic scales over a static C minor 7th chord. Example 22 features a major conversion, so we can superimpose minor pentatonic scales on top of major 7th chords. All you need to do is find the relative minor. So if we're playing over C major 7th, you do a, a relative minor conversion. A minor is the relative minor to C major, and then apply the same formula as we did previously. So the 2, the 5, and the 1. So A minor would be the 1. We could also superimpose E minor, the 5, and B minor, the 2, all over C major 7th. Example 23, we have a lick that works over F major 7th. So in this case, we're going to convert to the relative minor of F major, which is D minor. 
and then use the 251 formula over that. So D minor is the 1, A minor is the 5, and E minor is the 2. And we're going to superimpose all three of those minor pentatonic scales over uh, on top of an F major 7 chord. <laughs> In example 24, we're going to continue superimposing different ideas over our 2-5-1 cadence. Uh, in G minor, we have basically an, a D minor uh, pentatonic, D minor 7 type of idea on the 2 chord. And then we move up a half step to E flat minor 7 ideas on top of the C7, creating a nice altered sound. And then that resolves another half step to E minor ideas on F major 7. And I think as you're working through this, um, it's easy to think in half steps, particularly if you're superimposing minor pentatonic ideas, minor triad ideas, minor 7th chord ideas. Um, you can just start with one superposition and then just move up or down in half steps. In example 24, we're moving up in half steps chromatically over each chord in the 2-5-1 progression. Example 25, we continue this concept. We start with the 5 of the 2 chord, which in this case is G minor, which is the 2 of uh, F. Uh, and so in our cadence, we're going to superimpose D minor ideas on top of G minor. And now we're going to move down in half steps. So C sharp minor pentatonic ideas over C7 altered. And then finally, we're going to move back up to D minor over F major 7. And this works beautifully because D minor, of course, is the relative minor of F major. But some people call this technique sidestepping. And instead of moving up completely or down completely in half steps, we're just kind of starting in one particular area, shifting down for a half step for the 5 chord, and then right back up. And sidestepping is a, is a very easy and satisfying technique to play in guitar because, of course, you can use the inherent advantages of the fretboard um, to see the patterns emerge. You just you know, in position, play ideas, move down a half step, and then right back up into your original position for the one chord. It makes a nice tension and resolution. In example 26, we're going to start off with the root, so we're going to play uh, G minor ideas over G minor 7, the 2 chord. And then we're going to sidestep up a half step and play A minor, uh, sorry, A flat minor ideas on top of the C7 altered. And then we're going to continue moving up one half step and play A minor ideas on top of the F major 7, which will give us a nice F major 9 sound. So far in this chapter, we've been spending a lot of time superimposing different triads, pentatonic scales, and even ideas over a 2-5-1 progression. Now let's take a, a look at some different scales that we can use, particularly over the 5 chord. Uh, in the context of a 2-5-1 progression, the 5 is definitely the, the chord with the most options for color, um, creating dissonance and, and that, that tension and resolution effect that we're, uh, is such a big part of jazz in, in an eddy cadence. Um, so there are a number of different scales that we can use on top of the 5 chord from the root of that 5 chord. Example 27 illustrates a C whole tone scale, which can be used over a C dominant 7th chord. And when you play the whole tone scale, which is called a whole tone, whole tone scale because it's a six note scale built entirely in whole steps. When you play that over a dominant 7th chord, it really outlines a dominant 7 sharp 5 chord. Um, this was a sound that Thelonious Monk loved to use in his soloing and comping. Uh, and it's a, it's a very effective scale that you can use to create a lot of color of the 5 chord in the context of a 2-5-1. Example 28 illustrates this in context of a 2-5-1 progression. We're still in the key of F here. So we're playing some G minor ideas, and then on the 5 chord, we can create the sound of a C7 sharp 5 by using a C whole tone scale, and then resolve that uh, to an F major 7 idea in the final chord. Example 29 illustrates another favorite scale among jazz musicians, and that is the altered scale. 
Uh, a lot of guitar players simply think of this as the seventh mode of melodic minor, which it is. So uh, when guitar players tend to play an altered scale over an altered chord, uh, sometimes they'll just play the melodic minor up a half step. In this example, we have a C altered chord, uh, uh, C altered scale, so many guitar players will just think D flat melodic minor, which is fine, but I think it's also really nice to get to know the scale uh, built upon the root itself. And one, I think, one helpful way of thinking about this scale in terms of conceiving it in your head is that this scale really outlines the guide tones of C7, which would be the third E and the flat 7 B flat, and all other notes in the scale are altered extensions. So we have an altered 9, meaning a flat 9 and a sharp 9, which connects the C to the E. So that would be a D flat and D sharp leading up to the E. And then we have an altered 5th, a flat 5 and a sharp 5, which would connect uh, up to the flat 7. So those notes are G flat and G sharp, respectively. And if you think about the altered scale in terms of uh, basically a C7 guide tone shape with these little altered tones in between connecting them, it's a lot easier to visualize the fretboard and, and come up with some melodic ideas as opposed to running a scale pattern. <laughs> Example 30 illustrates the altered scale in the context of a 2-5-1. We're still in the key of F. So over the C7 altered chord, we're just going to straight up superimpose a C altered scale over that particular chord before resolving to F major 7. Example 31, let's take a look at another option for the 5 chord. The dominant diminished scale is also known as the half whole scale due to its construction of consecutive half steps and whole steps. In this example, we'll take a look at the C dominant diminished scale or the C half whole scale and look how it fits and hear how it fits over a C13 chord with the extensions sharp 9 and flat 9. Now if you're just playing a C7 chord, um, this is great. This is a great alternative to using the altered scale or the whole tone scale. It gives you a very different sound. It's a great uh, chord to use in blues or even over a funk progression where you have a static dominant seventh chord. Uh, in the case where you have the extension spelled out for you explicitly, when there's a natural 13, you would definitely use this scale as opposed to an altered scale because an altered scale would have a flat 13 or a sharp 5. This scale really promotes the sound of a natural 13 in tandem with a sharp 11, a flat 9, and a sharp 9. In example 32, we see a 2-5-1 progression in the key of F, and over the C7 chord, uh, we use a dominant diminished scale, a half whole scale over that. And what starts to emerge is all of these different triads within that particular chord scale. In example 33, let's take a look at how we can superimpose different triad ideas in the context of a 2-5-1 progression. On G minor 7, we're playing two triads that really outline the sound of G Dorian. Uh, we saw this concept earlier in the modal chapter, but we're setting up two triads, B flat major and C major, both of which really outline the sound of G Dorian. They both feature the color note within G Dorian. We can continue that idea over the 5 chord, C7, by superimposing triads that are extracted from this dominant diminished scale, or the half whole scale. Now one thing that's really cool about this scale, it's an 8 note scale, and we can extract major triads built in minor thirds. So for example, if C is the root, and then play that major triad in minor thirds, so the next triad would be E flat major, the next one would be F sharp major, and finally A major, and use all four of those over C7. And it's another way of um, really creating this half whole or dominant diminished sound. In this particular example, we start off uh, with a, the E flat triad uh, appears on the second beat, followed by the F sharp triad on the fourth beat. And that's actually a nice chromatic approach to F major seven. We'll move down a half step. But in this case, we'll take our minor pentatonic ideas that we've seen previously, and we'll superimpose A minor pentatonic on that F major 7 chord. <music> Example
Example 34 features yet another option over a 5-7 chord. This is the Lydian dominant scale. This is a wonderful mode to use. It's basically, you can think of it in two ways. It's kind of like a Mixolydian scale with a raised fourth, or you can think of it as a Lydian mode with a flat 7. And it's a very popular sound in jazz. Um, it's featured uh, to create the sound of a 13 sharp 11 chord. And uh, it's just a great alternative to a typical Mixolydian scale if you're just playing over a static 5 chord. Example 35, we see the Lydian flat 7 scale in action in the context of a 2-5-1 progression. This time on top of the C13 sharp 11 chord, we really just land right on that F sharp. It's anticipated into uh, the second measure, and it just creates that, that this really striking sound for the 5 chord. That's, that's very unique um, and, and a nice way to set up that following 1 chord. As the F sharp over the C7 chord, voice leads just beautifully up a half step to the G, which would be the ninth on top of F major 9. Alright, in example 36, we'll work through an A2 that's based on the changes to the standard Stella by Starlight by Victor Young. This is a beautiful song and a favorite uh, standard to play by a lot of jazz musicians of all levels. And in this A2, we're basically combining all of these ideas that we've checked out in this chapter. Um, there's triads superimposing over various 2-5-1 progressions, different scales with different flavors. There's some whole tone ideas, half whole ideas, altered scale ideas, uh, as well as moving chromatically in both directions with triads. So have fun with this one.